creator of the universe invites us to leave the darkness behind and to live in God's light. The one who danced at creation's birth invites us to walk the path of goodness. Come, let us worship God together. Amen. A good morning and welcome to this morning's service of worship. Today we're going to be looking at the contemporary issue of climate change and we'll be hearing from a variety of voices on the topic and how God loves creation. So I invite you to join together to sing our first hymn for the beauty of the earth. Join together for our opening prayer, which will be led for us by Reverend David Coleman, who is the Eco Chaplain of Scotland. Let us pray. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. We are so pleased that you are joining us via YouTube. Please join us on Zoom after the service where we will join together in a time of fellowship. All of our notices for the week are in contact and care. Next Sunday will be a very special Thanksgiving service and we are asking everyone, whoever watches our services, to send a clip to Nadine to give thanks for something that has really touched them during this time that we have spent in lockdown uh, with our services being on YouTube or via Zoom. 
And we ask you that you, you send those to her. And her details should appear um, on the screen now. For Christchurch Petswood, next Sunday is also a church meeting. So please um, read the papers that will be sent by email. And those of you receiving lunches will, be, will receive your card copies on Wednesday. Birthdays this week. Dennis has a birthday on Friday and we wish you a really special day. Thank you. Let's join together to sing our hymn, I Love the Sun. children two questions about climate change. For the older children, we asked them, if there is one thing your family could do differently to help the planet, what would it be? And the little ones, we asked, what could they do to love the planet more? And here are some of the answers. You can buy an electric car because petrol is bad for the planet. If my family could do one thing to help the environment, it would be change our energy supplies to be greener. Don't drop the My family were to do something differently to help the environment. We would use filtered tap water instead of buying bottled water. Always keep the world clean and nice. Things we could do as a family to be eco-friendly is to eat less meat. We love our planet by recycling. Today we have a really special item. Some of the girls from the Girls Brigade, along with their leader Alison, not only wrote but produced and recorded a beautiful song called Save Our Planet which they have shared with us this morning. Thank you so much to those girls for allowing us to use their beautiful song in our service. A brand new start with an eco-friendly heart In my street, in my car Smile covers up the bright white stars In my street, in my car Animals' habitats are ruined by us Deforestation is caused by us We can do little things to save our planet Save our planet, fix this mess Plastics in our fishing nets Save our planet, fix this mess It's all over the internet Hand in hand we face the land Looking for a happy ever after, after Hand in hand we save the land We give our hearts today a brand new start with an eco-friendly heart In my street, in my car Cleaning up the air we breathe In my street, from my car Animals' habitats are made by us New forests are planted by us We can do little things to save our planet We're open to change Showing our planet we care again New solutions come to our brains We are ingenious once again Hand in hand we face the land Looking for a happy ever after, after Hand in hand we save the land We give our hearts 
hearts today. We give our hearts today. A big thank you to Reverend Alex Mabs for sharing with us a lovely reflection on Climate Sunday. It's hard to believe in something you can't see, such as the future. For the Israelite slaves in Egypt, it was hard to believe that the future would be any different. Life went on, day after day, in slavery. But the instructions for Passover said, wake up, things are about to change. Eat in a hurry, dress ready to run, because the day of liberation is upon you. For us, I think it's hard to believe that the future will be any different from today. So let's carry on. Borrow from the future what you want for today. Borrow money, borrow natural resources, borrow clean air, borrow the lives of those not yet born. Tomorrow will be the same as today, so you'll be able to pay back what you owe. St Paul says, wake up. Owe no one anything except love because the day of liberation is upon you. Humanity is sleepwalking into a climate catastrophe. The future is going to be very different and we won't be able to pay back what we've borrowed from it. We and our descendants will be slaves to that bad debt forever, assuming we survive. We need to wake up and live in the truth. We need to live today with only today's bread, owing no one anything except love. We need to live today in the love of Christ and love our neighbours of whatever species because that love is what's needed to turn debt and destruction around to liberation and build a future where every living being can flourish. Thank you to Julian for doing our reading this morning, taken from Romans. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 19 to 29. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole of creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And likewise the Spirit helps us with our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. In 1991, when I was studying theology at Rhodes University in South Africa, we spent an entire term looking at creation theology. And in the beginning of the term, when we heard what we would be doing, we were quite horrified, including myself. Why were we spending so much time doing something on the earth? didn't make any sense to us. We wanted to be talking about liberation theology. We wanted to be talking about a church where we would be walk, working towards a different future, where apartheid would no longer be part of our country's story, but only part of our history. We wanted to be discussing issues of justice, not issues of creation. 
and our lecturers were very gracious and very kind and very loving towards us and explained that there is no justice if there isn't justice for all and that includes the earth. So our complaint, our misunderstanding of what creation spirituality was all about said something about a symptom of how I'd been brought up as a Christian. I had been to church since I was three years old. The church was my life and my passion. I felt the call to ministry at the age of 10. And yet I didn't understand how important creation was to us and our spirituality. It was something that was there, accessible, obviously given to us by God, but there for us to use and to use her resources as we need it. There was never a sense in which creation was something beautiful, something that was a reflection of God that we needed to care for. Yes, we had dominion over the earth and there was a sense of a kind of responsibility, but did I grow up really understanding that this is a reflection of the God who is a God of abundance, the God of love, the God who is passionate about the earth. That said something about how we understood uh, creation spirituality or not in the church. The Romans passage that Julian read for us is a really beautiful visceral passage. It gives us the picture of the earth groaning for its freedom. We as human beings have sinned. We have not only sinned against each other and against God, but also against creation. And so this passage is speaking about creation wanting to be liberated as much as we long for that liberation. Climate change is something that years ago, I think we could get away with ignoring or just thinking it's a few splinter groups who have a fascination for the climate. But that's no longer possible. No longer can we ignore or deny the realities that we see around us and the consequences of those realities. I know that not everybody agrees with the children standing up and striking and taking to the streets to have their voices heard. But this is an issue that you and I can no longer decide belongs to another group of people. But actually, as Christians, it is our mandate, it is our passion to care for the earth. I feel mortified at my younger self. I didn't understand God's passion for this earth. I can see that God must weep looking at the barrier reef that has been bleached white from its beautiful colors, for all the animals and plants that have gone extinct, for the oceans that are covered in plastic, for the animals that now have absorbed that plastic into their organs, and us. It must be so hard for God to have seen this beautiful creation that has been so wrecked by our misuse. As the church, we have the most beautiful and profound spirituality and understanding of a God who absolutely loved what God created. So may we make a difference in our lives. Amen. We have an introduction to A. Rosha and Eco Church from Andy Atkins this morning. Thank you, Andy. I'm Andy Atkins. I'm director of Arosha UK. And I just want to take three minutes or so to tell you about who we are, what we do and why we do it and how you can join in if you want to. Nobody needs telling these days that the environment is in deep trouble, but there is hope. We believe that as Christians, we are called upon to look after the wider environment creation, if you like, which our creator God has made. We also believe strongly that we can have a huge impact if we work together to do this. So in Arosha UK, we started off with local environmental projects, including this one where I am now in Wolf Fields, our reserve in West London. But we are now trying to have a national impact, working with many, many others like yourselves to make a real difference for creation in this country and abroad. So we work in four different ways. The first one is helping to restore land and this site where I am now used to be a dump. We cleared 54 tons of rubble off it to create what is now a lovely little oasis for nature and people in the heart of a deprived area of West London. But we now work with a network of other charities and churches called the Partners in Action Network to restore land in their area, to manage the land that they own for nature, for cutting carbon, to help with climate change for enabling the local community to really benefit. 
The second way we work is by supporting churches and we have a toolkit which we call Eco Church, which now enables almost 3,000 churches in this country to address everything from what they preach, the theology of creation care, right through to cutting their carbon, how they manage their land if they have it, how they join with the local community on the environment. You'll be very, very welcome to join that if you're not already a member. The third way we work is by helping individuals and families to look after creation in their own home, in their own window box even, if that is the only land that they have in their street, in their community. That's called Wild Christian, and it's not just a monthly email of good ideas. It's a forum where Christians can come together to share their own experience, to share their own stories, to share their own ideas on how we can do this better together. And last of all, Arosh UK is now supporting Christians in environmental leadership, whether they are in government, whether they are in uh, a, a, a Christian denomination, but in charge of the environment there, and so on. We provide regular prayer forums, we bring people together for conferences and to share ideas on how we together can lead churches and Christians to have more impact. We invited all of our working groups to share with us how their group has engaged with Eco Church, and here are some of their answers. Hi everyone, on behalf of the World Church and Social Action Group, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for everybody's efforts in getting behind Eco Church. Eco Church was something that Pauline brought to us about four years ago, um, and in 2017 we decided it was going to be a big focus. And we went about recruiting a green group, which is passionately led by David, um, and he recruited all of the wonderful members that cut across all of the working groups in our church. And already so many things have changed um, and we are so fortunate that Nadine came on board and was that person to push us on even further um, and make those awards a reality. When we first looked at those awards, we didn't know how we were going to ever tick all those boxes. And now we have bronze and silver. So let's go for gold. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of Christchurch Green Group, I would like to acknowledge and thank the church members for their support and help towards Christchurch gaining the bronze and silver Eco Church awards. We're now well on our way in our quest for gold. Climate change is affecting countries all over the world and it is so good that more and more people are taking steps to reduce their own impact on the planet. We pray that people everywhere will learn to become more caring towards the environment in which they live. Pastoral care is not only caring for one another, but also acting responsibly as we go about carrying out our duties. One way the pastoral care group have contributed to Eco Church is by cutting down on the amount of paper we use. We realised we did not need quite so many lists of names and groups of people where one list would be sufficient. We have also cut down on meeting time, but are in regular contact via email. And we were also happy to support the idea of not sending individual Christmas cards to Christchurch friends, but to send just one card. These were pinned to the board in the lounge last Christmas and made an attractive display. This is a scheme that works beautifully. The Property Working Group have become more eco-friendly in a number of ways. For example, by installing double glazing. We are replacing windows with double glazed units throughout the church buildings. Hot air rises. When we replaced our heating system in the sanctuary, we incorporated destratification fans, which force heated air back down to the level of the congregation, reducing the amount of heating required. It's sometimes overlooked that looking after our environment includes keeping our property gardens and hedges in good order. Whilst the property working group don't have much to do with our well-kept lawns and borders, the trees and shrubs are kept neat and tidy by our convener. We are working hard to upgrade our buildings to make sure they're fit for 21st century use. LED lighting has been fitted in most of the church and occupancy switches are also in use to ensure the lights go out when the room isn't in use. Our urinals don't flush with water, saving this precious resource by using a neutralising chemical instead. The Fellowship and Hospitality Group has become more eco-friendly by 
endeavouring to buy food and equipment carefully in order to minimise waste materials. If at all possible, local produce would be sourced. We endeavour not to use disposable cups, but when necessary, the ones we buy are fully compostable. Once the current stock of plastic plates have been used, the group will not be buying any non-recyclable tableware. We reuse linen tablecloths, not paper, and these have generally been sold second-hand. The group will continue to push for the provision of separate recycling bin, waste bins within the church, but in, until then, we usually take our rubbish home to be recycled. As a finance group, you may think, how can we contribute to our climate? We just receive and spend money. But we are looking at how working groups are spending that money. With our giving, we encourage members to pay by backs so that we can cut down on the free will offering envelopes. When we look at our suppliers, we try to source goods from the locality where possible. We do not just stop at physical goods, but we look at our utilities and insurance and choose companies who have, have ethical and green credentials. We minimise the use of paper by having documentation in the cloud and emailing invoices to our hirers. As a committee, we support other working groups in achieving their mission and supporting the church to become eco-friendly. Good morning. You might be thinking that the worship group can have little to contribute towards eco awards at this church, but let me tell you, we were one of the first to tick all the boxes as we went for that silver and bronze award. The church has celebrated harvest and God's creation for centuries, but it's only in the recent years as the world has become more conscious of the impact we are having on our world that it has been incorporated on a more regular basis. And in our planning and in our thinking of special services, parade services, we constantly think of how we can get that message of how we should care for God's world. And rest assured that in the weeks ahead there will rarely be a service where either in hymns, prayers or in the word that the environment will not be mentioned. And it is our plan to keep this at the top of the agenda as it's such an important message in these times. On behalf of Church of Youth and uh, the working group, um, I would like to say that I think that our working group has become more eco-friendly uh, by actively ensuring that so far as possible, we use recycled paper, uh, that any activities that we engage in with the children, we ensure that any waste is disposed of um, in an eco-friendly way and that uh, we engage in recycling as far as we can. Um, with the children, we do engage in activities where we try to engage them in nature. Um, they've been very interested in all of the projects that we've had um, at Christ Church in terms of the eco church with the hedgehog um, run, the um, uh, bug hotel um, and various other projects where we are allocating the children an area of the garden for themselves to um, uh, start planting um, and we hope that that will all take place uh, post Covid when we can all get together again. Um, I think with the children generally though we are pushing hopefully I feel on an open door in that they are very aware of their planet and are very anxious to conserve their planet. Um, they are um, educated um, both at home and at school I think in terms of wanting to ensure that they preserve their planet for the future um, and that gives me great hope. Um, so I am um, blessed at Christchurch in that we've got a very supportive group for that. Thank you. A big thank you to Rachel, who's going to share with us a little bit about a local group that we can get involved in that deals with climate change issues and working towards a greener planet. Hi everyone, I just wanted to tell you quickly about a local community group called Greener and Cleaner Bromley and Beyond. It's a community interest group that's been set up by residents in Bromley. Um, it's primarily a Facebook group, which you can join um, by searching in the search bar on Facebook and requesting to join the group. Um, it's really friendly, very non-judgmental. Non the aim of the group was very much to help share tips and hints on how to be more 
environmentally friendly. Um, so you'll find all sorts in there from what plastics you can recycle, how to recycle crisp packets, but also tips on reducing waste and consumption. We also have a bit of a political aim to the group. So things that you might see that are shared on there are um, consultations with local councillors, opportunities to email your local councillor or your MP to encourage them to adopt more environmental policies. And last year in the run up to the general election, we also organised um, environmental hustings in all of the boroughs, that, um, all of the constituencies that come under the Bromley borough. Um, it's a really great group. There's monthly meetings if you want to get involved in that, or it can be just as little as being a member on the Facebook group and seeing what goes on there. Let us join together to sing our hymn, God Lent Us This Planet. Let us pray. Creator God, how deep are your designs? You made a living earth, cloud, rain and wind, and charged us with their care. We confess that the way we live today is changing the climate and the balance of nature and wildlife, dispossessing today's poor, and threatening the lives of future generations. So we pray for ourselves that our attitudes and practices will change, that we shall abandon those things which damage this beautiful planet and adopt new ways of caring for it and preserving it so that there is enough for all, both today and for centuries to come. We pray for the world's politicians. Move them to act in the best interests of all nations today and all people in the future. We ask for a generation of leaders who will be willing to act justly and with compassion so that those in poorer countries who are already suffering the effects of a cl changing climate will have their burden eased and be able to lead a sustainable and productive existence. Be with us in our personal lives, in our homes and in our individual church communities as we seek in our own small ways to redress some of the imbalance which our lifestyles have created. 
There are many who especially need the comfort of your presence today. Within the Christchurch community, we pray for Lynn, Pauline, Michael and Pamela, Lorraine, Janet H, Sheila, Mike, Cyril, Martin HW, Janet D and the family of Janet's brother Ron. In Beckenham URC, we pray for David, Tish, Sheila and Pat. In Salting URC, we pray for Andrew and Jill. And we share with Womborn URC in their prayers for those receiving treatment and in poor health or low spirits. We also pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. May God comfort them at this time. Father God, help us to focus on what lies ahead. Remind us that you call us to care for the earth and its people. Motivate us afresh to take action. Empower us to work with you to restore a broken world. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever and ever 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 and ever and ever and forever and ever and ever amen amen let us join together to sing our new hymn now jesus lives here as promised
May the one to whom every knee shall bow and every tongue be praised enfold you in loving kindness. May the one who was nailed to the tree for challenging the powers give you the grace to challenge the lies of our age. May the one who sustains creation inspire you in love, that you remain unsatisfied until the earth is healed. Amen. I'm going to invite you to say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. <laughs> Come on, Betty. <laughs> Betty's nothing. <laughs> Bye, Betty. Okay. Three. We love our planet by recycling. <laughs>